So we're always looking for faster ways to get people productive with Origin with less barriers, less friction. And one of them is Vector. So it's a web-based package that lets you edit 2D vectors, create vectors from scratch. It's vectr.com. We don't create it or anything, but it is free and it's very easy and intuitive to use. It gives you the ability to edit SVGs, create SVGs from scratch, all on a web page. So no need to install software. If you're ever in a weird location and don't have access to your own computer or don't want to invest in software, this is a great option to get you up and going. Now these files work in Origin. So I'll just choose Use Online. You get a lot of ads and things in here, which happens with free stuff, but it lets you create shapes. So if you sign up, it'll save everything you make and you can come back to it later. So you could log in and return to projects you've done in the past. We're just gonna use it without signing in to show you how simple it is. First things first, we'll move over here on the right and look at the file settings. So at the moment we're in pixels and you'll see that highlighted. We want to move to real world units. So this enables Origin to load things in appropriately scaled so that everything you do makes sense in the real world. One more thing is just make sure snapping is on. The snapping is actually quite capable here, but the grid is like rather odd. It just divides your page into equal number of units. So it's not useful for accurately creating the shapes of a specific size. So this is never going to be full on CAD. It's just a quick and simple way of getting basic shapes into Origin. So yeah, don't be using it with the intention of doing, you know, parametric sort of precision work and also don't use it for text. Currently it doesn't bake out the text as outlines, which Origin needs, but till they add that, we can't use that. So here's a shape. I just chose rectangle, dragged. You'll notice it gives me a readout of its dimensions and it defaults to a strange color, so green. This is not one of our standard Origin color codes. So if I want to make this cut on the outside of this line when it comes into Origin, I'm going to choose black. So that's background, which is the same as fill in most applications. Select it again and it's settings, attributes come up. I don't want a border on this one. I'll show you what a border looks like. So this is a purple border of 0.1 inches. So that's the outline stroke. So in most applications, this is called stroke. And you can see I can turn it on and off with this tick box. So leave all the settings default. We don't want a stroke, but if we did, we'd want it centered. And don't add extra elements with the plus. Don't add shadows or effects or opacity. Just make the shapes as is and you're good to go. So this is a rectangle and we can go down here, size it appropriately. So I want a four inch rectangle. I can take off the proportional lock and do it three inches vertical. That's cool. When we want to place it somewhere specific, it's always referring to the top left corner. So if I go down here and go zero, zero, it's 100% zero, zero in that top corner and just to enter to accept. So I could do it say 0 0.5, 0 0.7. If I wanted to bake in an offset relative to the edge, I would put a guide in here. So we'll see how these snapping options work. So if I hover above this edge, you'll see that top line goes blue and match this corner, that top line goes blue as well. So if I click and drag that and do the same in this corner, I can say, see how it says zero, zero. So I'll give it a blue border. It's a bit purple, but it's fine. And remove the fill. And I'll also make this tiny 0.01. So that means if I ever place this object, it will place relative to this edge. By default, Origin just looks at the bounding box of all your geometry and uses that for its anchor point selection. So this means I can bake in a specific offset from an edge when I go to place this on my object. And you might want to do it at this edge, depending on how you place it. If I place it with the anchor point in the top left, this would be the appropriate edge to offset it from. Now, if I want to do some other more interesting things, we'll make a different, you'll see the snaps working again. I'm gonna find the center of this geometry. Right there, it's kind of hard to see, but. So that's going from the center out beyond the edge. I'm gonna use this to do a Boolean. And that's just basically combining shapes. So holding down shift, I can select the two of them. It's selecting this outside edge. So this will bring up another thing that's interesting. Even though it's got no fill, I'm selecting it. So I can go and hide that. So I'm gonna lock it. So I can just temporarily hide or lock. So now when I select here, I get the element I want. So you can name these as well. So cause it an ellipse, even though we held down shift when we dragged it to make sure it was square. I'm gonna combine these two, shift select. Now it comes up with all these options. So I can 
add. So that's a shape that is the entire perimeter of everything with no internal lines through the center. I can subtract, I can intersect or exclude. So for this one, one of the most common ones you're gonna use is subtract. So now I've got my two shapes combined and I'll be able to use origin to cut on the outside of this part. If I double click this, you'll notice my shape is still live. So I can actually come and use this to snap to that top edge. It might be a bit difficult to see, but I actually snapped it to these two edges and it was very apparent. So there's that. Now, if I double click again, I can do things like add a radius to a corner. So this is like a sub object editing. So you notice I can select these points. So I was selecting this one to do a radius and then I select the outside edge to change the actual point itself. So you'll see it easier with a hard edge here. Now you'll notice this is kind of still combining these objects live, which is actually quite powerful when you see how this is behaving. But it means I can't radius this edge or this edge. But for a lot of things, this is really powerful. So that's the flipping options, vertical, horizontal. So clicking away eliminates that. Now I can do some other things here. I can double click. You'll notice there's a little point pops up when I hover over a line. So if I click with that point visible, I can drag this and you'll see how things update. So that at the moment is a hard edge. If I double click it, I get a easier control handles. I'm gonna make them as large or small as I like. And then with busier handles available, I can hold down control click if I want to break that smooth, easier curve. And then you can cycle back. It doesn't remember your busier stuff when you're cycling. So just double click on a, on a point to manipulate it, holding down control to change that to a hard edge. It's actually pretty powerful. So we'll go and we'll, we can just export this now. So there's my shape, download. It just puts it in your download folder. We'll take a look at that. So if we go to take this file in from Vector, just gonna load up Shaper Hub, there it goes. You'll see we have these nine anchor points available to us. So this is what point on the file we want to use as a reference for placing. So we see the boundary there, that guide we made with all these offsets baked in. So I'm gonna come down and my goal is gonna be to place it using the top left corner at the center of this grid that we have here. That's just in the middle of a panel. Top left corner, I'm now at negative 0.5 in Y and one in X. So I'm gonna go back to zero, zero. Okay, at this point, we now have the offsets that were designed into our digital file mapping over to the real world aligned to this grid perfectly. So that gap between the zero line and X and Y are all coming over defined from our file using the grid and the bounding box to predetermine that. So if I place that, now I know that this is exactly where I want it. We can quickly jump to cut and I'll do a quick air cut just to show you. So that file we made is readily cuttable at the scale we designed it in vector. Close that. And then I can just go new file and I'll show you some other things that are pretty cool. So if I go upload image, select this. Now I've measured this wrench here, this spanner. This is the one that ships with origin or one of the ones that ship with origin. So I'm going to zoom out. By the way, the zoom button's down here. In Chrome anyway, using the scroll wheel to zoom is a bit cumbersome. You can use it to scroll up and down or use these little sliders or the space bar and then left click. But yeah, for, for most zoom operations, I actually use this little button down here. Now I'm gonna make a shape that is the appropriate size. So I know that I've measured this to 6.595 inches. So we're still in inches here. We don't have to change that again. So I'm gonna make this 6.595, that's good. Now I'm going to manipulate the background image until I'm scaled appropriately. So I'm gonna rotate it by hovering above near the edge. I'll show you how that works. So this would be scale in one axis, we'll undo that. 
this would be scale proportionally. I'll undo that. If I hold down shift, it's scale proportionally. Now, if I go here, I can move it and scale this proportionally some more. I'm holding down shift. And you'll see here, I'm just trying to get these two ends to line up with my spanner. That's how I measured it. I think that'll be perfect. So I'm going to delete this, or actually I'll just hide it. Hide the rectangular path, bring my main image down. So I'm now confident it's the right scale. If I was to have shot this at a weird oblique angle, you'd get increasing distortion. So I kind of shot this from as top down as possible. But yeah, if you're doing this, if you can put it on like a flatbed scanner, that's perfect. Taking photos like this can get you pretty accurate outcomes. So I'm now going to lock my image. So under the layers menu, lock. Now I'm going to start tracing this. So I'm just going to use the pen tool and it's going to be, I'm going to use it much the way we use it in origin. And just quickly zip along. I don't have to be too precious here because I'm going to come back and tidy all this up. By zooming in in a bit. You notice I can click and drag to do the bezier things if I want to do that now. All right, so that's a vague outline. It's way too thick, 0.005, a bit more visible. So now I can zoom in and start tuning this. So I'm just holding down the space bar and then left click to drag. So if I double click this, I can now start to round these corners. So we'll do some of this, some of this. It's up to you how meticulous you want to be. You can use a standard arc or hand tune the beziers. Moving along, everything looks good here. I'll take this one, double click again to get me back to my rounded dots, and then add a radius here. Let's move this up just a little. Holding down space to move. If you ever drop out of point edit mode, just double click again. This one I'll actually get a, a hard edge. And then we'll take care of the arc on this side. We'll add another one on this side. So just click the points, change things around. This one will be fun. I'll uh, do one click here to add a point. Drag it over, it's faceted, double click, it's now a bezier. So sometimes if you see these bezier curves get too close, you can have problems. Add an arc here. One last corner to figure out. I'll double click this to make it a bezier curve. Notice both handles move unless you control drag. So that's now the shape I'm after. Instead of a hard edge, we'll make it ever so slightly soft. Now I'm going to click zoom out. And so that's basically ready to send to origin. So I'm going to hide my image and convert this from a border to a background and export it. That would be ready for exporting if we were doing an outside cut. We'll change it to an inside cut, so we'll make it a white background or fill, and the stroke or boundary will make that black. So that's now defined as an inside cut. So we'll export that, download it to Shaper Hub, my origin files, and there we have it. And the big takeaway here is you don't need to install anything. You literally just type in vector.com, load it up, and you can start creating right in a web browser, and then save that file, drop it on Shaper Hub, and you're up and running with origin. So you can create accurately dimensioned files, color-coded, ready to cut. So hopefully that helps some people out, and we look forward to bringing you more capabilities in the future.